Czech story is, is quite amazing. You probably study about it, but we met, I guess it was last January, yeah. last January, and uh, they were gracious enough to come and talk to a class, and I think we had maybe, what, eight students there? So, I, as you can see, we're probably doubling or, or uh, more than doubling that uh, today. A quick check is an amazing story. If you're ever, uh, you see the, you know, the, the stores that they have and the, and the business model that they have, it's quite amazing how they've been able to grow their, their business. And with that growth, they, they need a lot of uh, different resources to fuel the growth. Uh, of new stores as well as uh, the promotions that go through their system. So uh, it's my pleasure to introduce Bob Grasek, who's the VP of Human Relations, Thank uh, you. Human Resources for uh, Quickcheck, and I'm going to let you introduce our, our uh, celebrity visitor. You have Anthony, you have to help me with your last name. Zavik. There you go, Zavanovic. Uh, Anthony joined us uh, from this university on June 5th. And the last time I was here, Anthony sat right where you sat. So watch out, you may be next. I uh, asked a lot of good questions and followed up, ended up getting hired, and I'm gonna give him an opportunity to talk about the program that he joined and where he is in his career with, with our company. So with that, I'm Bob Grazak. I've been with Quick Check for 19 years, a little over 19 years. I've been in the convenience store industry since 1974. I'll let you do the math. It's a long, long time. So why convenience stores? Why Slurpees, hot dogs, and Snicker bars for all these years? Well, let me go through the model, our company's model, you know, kind of get a sense of the retail environment that we offer people that join our company today, and really within the industry. But I'm gonna talk specifically about our company and the opportunities that we have as we continue to grow. This year, we'll open up eight stores. Next year, we call it six plus. Plus might be a relocation or a new store with gasoline. So a quick check, it's really all about our people. It's, you can talk about product, you can talk about physical plant. How you doing? Um, but it's the people that make it tick and that it works. A brief history about our company. We've been around since 1967. In fact, next year we're doing a quiet internal 50 year celebration. So we're pretty proud about being around 50 years. We're still private. We're owned by Dean Darling. Dean is the president and CEO of the company. He bought it from his dad about 12, 13 years ago. Um, first store is in Donellan, New Jersey. Anybody heard of Donellan? One person, two. We're still there, store number one, still in Dun Ellen. Uh, we have 145 stores, actually it's 147, so every time we hit five I change the slide, 147 stores uh, today. 10 stores and Long Island, in fact we have growth plans for Long Island. We have a store open up, we have a second store opening up in March, April time frame. 10 stores have pharmacies, many people don't realize that, but within our chain we have 10 pharmacies. Uh, we have one liquor store. We can only have two licenses in the state. We have an independent liquor store that's under ShopRite, and we have liquor store in one of our convenience stores. And we're growing five to seven new stores a year, all with gasoline, adding two to 300 uh, team members. As an organization, it's a great place to work, great place to shop, and a great place to invest. It's not coincidental that a great place to work comes first. We think that if we create a place where people want to come to work, have a good time most of the time, uh, enjoy getting up every day, you're in a good position to take care of the customers. <clears throat> to take care of our customers. Then comes a great place to invest. So, great place to work, great place to shop, and a great place to invest. And we talk about investing with a private company, there's two things that we do with our money. We pay bonuses to all of our team members, and every team member from the most part-time all the way up through the president gets some level of bonus. And the second thing is reinvesting in our stores. Today, mostly the new builds, but also a couple of remodels every year. All right, so our capital expenditures are very significant, which comes from the profits that we make. A little bit about our core values, because the uh, 
the core values are important to us. It's how people are expected to behave. And they're there in front of you, but strong leadership is the top core value. And it's not by accident that we put it on top. Dean says that strong leadership isn't a nice to have, it's mandatory, it's a requirement. So when you talk about leadership, it's how do you build teams to run our stores, how do you build teams to run our districts, which could be 10 or 12 stores, and you have the leadership skills that create an environment where people want to come to work, uh, where they're glad to be there, where they're trained and developed, and easy to talk about, but sometimes challenging to deliver because you need to develop those skills. I'll make a mention that we have leadership measures, one being engagement scores. And we expect leaders to generate a 75 or greater engagement score. And if you know about engagement in the workforce today, that's a pretty significant number. Our number as a company is 67% of our team members engaged. Right? We're a hair above par in a retail business. And our goal is now 75. Take strong leadership skills to generate that kind of an engagement within our teams. And we have been nominated as the best place to work both in New York and New Jersey over several years. We think it's important. Uh, we, our mission is a great place to work. So we could walk around saying that we're a great place to work and feel good about it. This is from our team members. They're the ones who vote. 25% of this voting comes from internal, what do we do, uh, benefits, pay, the perks that we offer our team members. 75% comes from the surveys that are completed by the team members. So we're pretty proud of that. And team members keep us on our toes uh, when we do things that might not seem like a great place to work. They'll say, really? Is that a great place to work? And can candidly, we think about that before we issue policies or procedures. We think of that when we're dealing with employee issues uh, so that we're consistent and we work hard at becoming cons consistent with a great place to work. I can talk to you about one is a retail internship program. And this is where we, if you're a business major or business related and you want a retail internship, uh, we can create one for you in our stores, usually during the summer months, but our internships can fit your particular schedule. I don't have a canned program, I have a program that we design and develop around the individual student. But generally it would be during the summer months and we would lay out a, a schedule for you to learn uh, what it's like to work in a store. And it's not just being a cashier or making sandwiches, but you work towards becoming a shift leader. So there's classroom work, there's task work, and you get an experience of what the pace is like in a retail environment. Our stores are busy. You're in 143, which is right around here, uh, Carlstad. Uh, very, very busy. Uh, and you've got to almost be, we say you got to kind of like be crazy to enjoy that busyness. You've got to draw energy from the, from the craziness. Uh, and that's really what it's like in, in our busy stores. And every store we open, we plan on it being very, very busy. So we need leaders that can handle the pace, handle the busyness, handle the team members, the vendors, the customers. So business related, interest in retail and store operations. Right, any kind of an interest. And it's an internship, so you can test it for a summer, get paid for it. You like it? Great. If you don't, you say, okay, I tried that and it's not, it's not for me. But that's the value of the internship. The ideal candidate, if you think about this, does this, if you check these off, is that you? Love to serve customers and sell merchandise. Analytical with good writing skills. Um, strong interpersonal skills. Computer literate. All of our business today is uh, run on computers. Uh, for the most part, if you come out of school, you're pretty good at computers to begin with. But ours is our POS, point of sale is all computers. Our back office is all computers. Training is on computers. Performance management systems are on computers. Uh, all of that is uh, very, very important. Manage multiple tasks in a retail environment. If you can handle multiple things at one time and you're not um, bothered by that or stressed out by that, this could be exciting.
Uh, uh, talk a minute about your experience, Anthony. My name is Anthony Zanavik, currently a student Appalachian. I'll be graduating in June. Uh, I sat where she was sitting a few months ago. I'll be going out five months soon. Came into the program from the bottom. I had previous experience managing as a subcontractor for Amazon dispatching routes. So before that, I was in retail of all the food. Um, came here, watched the program with Bob, and uh, some of the numbers he will speak about spoke out to me, and I started asking a lot of questions. We're in a younger generation. We like to move around, we like to learn. Everything is uh, online based, but there's a lot of in-person training as well. And what you asked before, how do you get updated? From the bottom down, QuickCheck has a really good uh, response with how they communicate all their policies and procedures. And they have really good policies in place to take care of the team members. Um, there's always a coach. From day one, you're signed with a coach. This person is there to mentor you, is there to take care of you. You're not just thrown in somewhere where you have no idea what's going on. From the bottom up, from day one, you're given training. Very understanding with you. And uh, when I got hired, he told me, you can take this as far as you want to go or as short as you want to go. And I'm taking it to the top right now. I'm closed in December to take over a store. And from then on, it's up to me to where I want to go. If I want to relocate, they got relocation packages. I can continue to grow as much as I want. And um, something you might not speak about in this presentation is the corporate side. Some of us might be in accounting, might be in other styles of learning, but we don't want to be in operations. Operations day-to-day, customer-based information. They got a huge support center, which is corporate, and a lot of people who come out of operations go into corporate. They work for quick check, not that far away, about 45 minutes of corporate, and they have to. So, ask as many questions as you can today. You might not find them again. However, he is very open to phone calls, but uh, this is definitely an opportunity to get one. Got a couple of questions for you. You know, one of the things that we're trying to do uh, here at Felicia is promote uh, the the alumni and also introduce the students to some of the new career paths that uh, that they could be looking at as as they graduate. Uh, you mind if I ask you a few questions regarding that? Well, first of all, uh, as I said, uh, welcome back. Uh, when you look back at, at where you were. I guess a year ago, uh, coming in to hear this presentation. Can you just kind of tell us about uh, how reluctant you were to come to one of the presentations, to what you learned, and to where you are now? Definitely. Um, previously, I had experience in logistics, and before that, it was retail food. Uh, so when I heard about QuickCheck coming to the university through Scardino and uh, Joe Lisa, mm -hmm. I was interested right away what was going on, but I wasn't really sure, to be really honest with you. I, I heard of Quick Check, I wasn't too sure about what it was all about, and I came to a presentation at Bob Grace, I felt, and uh, it really opened my eyes a lot. Uh, some of the numbers he spoke about, some of the different training strategies that they had, and the growth opportunities for me spoke out great. When you look at what your perception was of a of a company, of, a, of a, let's say an example of, of a quick check, to what you realized when you came to the presentation, was it eye-opening? Eye-opening. To say the least, eye-opening. What were some of the things that surprised you? Personally, the level of uh, engagement with them, from management down to worker, at the, basis, at the most basic level, some of the things that he spoke about in the uh, presentation spoke volumes to me and how far they will transmit their information all the way from the top down. They're very open. And now from the inside perspective of being within the company, I am uh, definitely seeing a lot of that becoming true. I was a little skeptic about it from the outside. Uh, seeing the presentation and sitting right here, I wasn't too sure about how much he was really selling to how much he was really telling the truth. And um, now that I've taken a position, I've come to understand that they're very truthful about what they sell. And 
I think are explaining a lot. Yeah, one of the things that, that impressed me with, with them was that when they share all of the things that you're going to be learning when you when you run a store. Uh, the, you're being exposed to supply chain, you're being exposed to uh, accounting and management and people skills. And at a very young age, you get to see so many complementary uh, business uh, subjects that, that, that all come together and working in, in one store at such a very young age. Have, have you experienced that? Yes. Everything he speaks about is very realistic. From the top down, I deal with vendors, supply orders where I'm coming in at five, six thousand dollars, I've got gasoline deliveries coming in at ten thousand dollars, ten thousand gallons, sometimes two times, two, three times a day. Every single day of the week is a different task. I'm either running a delivery coming in and packing it out or I'm running the staff packing it out. Uh, the particular store I'm in, Carl's that a few minutes from here is insanely busy. It's one of the top in the chain. There's some stores that are a little bit slower in volume, but no matter where you are, you're exposed to a lot of these real world elements where I think it's really important for some of the students here for to understand that um, from where they're sitting and what, what's in their mind nowadays is uh, it's kind of a false reality. They don't understand that there's a lot that goes on with stepping onto the field. And this is one of the realer moments to where they can understand what's coming and what's possible for them because the growth is there. Yeah, one of the things we're trying to promote is the it's it trying to put a personality on a subject and teaching a career path. And part of this is, is, is bringing corporations here to tell that story as opposed to just learning it and listening in a, in a classroom. So do you think that's accomplishing that objective? 100%. Uh, from day one, you are put in a classroom to understand what's going on. Thereafter, you're out in the field and everything is hands-on experience. So in your, from an alumni perspective, we should continue doing what we're doing? 100%. Well, can I? Can we count on you to be a mentor for a lot of the uh, for a sure. lot of the students? That's part of my growth development program, and that's one of the things I love about PreCheck is it's a coach up, coach down moment. To from the moment I walked in, I got a coach and a mentor, and a mentor above them was mentoring them, and it's a reverse relationship to where one day. I will be teaching them something, and eventually I'll be teaching somebody else as well. You know, you mentioned uh, mentorship. One of the one of the initiatives that we have going into business school are bringing uh, having mentors, not only mentors within school, but mentors after they graduate. So we may be calling on you to be a mentor for some of the Always some of the. After. And one last question: When you sat here a year ago, and when you came, probably reluctantly, to hear the to hear the presentation to where you are now and I don't want to, you don't need to, you know, give out any uh, salary information, but do you ever think you'd be making that type of money the first year out of, out of college? I saw myself achieving where I am. I didn't think it was going to come that fast, but I'm extremely grateful for where I'm at and I'm extremely grateful for the growth path. Uh, results are not always typical, as stated everywhere, but they are achievable. And from the perception of a student at a younger age, I'm 22 now, going on 23, the pay scale of where I am is extremely appreciative. 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 Competitive, competitive would be the right word. Well, um, so I'm very grateful for that. Well, we welcome you. Thank and you. don't be a stranger. We're going to be calling on you from now on. Thanks so much. Thank you.